In this video, we're going to look at linear functions and we're going to look at some shortcuts we can take to graph them. Now, a linear function will have a graph that is a straight line. And they're usually written in one of the following two forms, either gradient intercept form or general form. An example of gradient intercept form may be the function y equals 3 quarters x plus 2. We can see that both functions look exactly the same, except they've replaced m with 3 quarters and they've replaced b with 2. Now m and b have a special meaning to them. m is the symbol that we use for gradient. So the gradient, or m, for this function is 3 quarters. b is the symbol we use for y-intercept. So the y-intercept, or b, for this function is 2. Gradient-intercept form is really useful because it's easy to find the gradient and the y-intercept. This comes in really handy when you want to sketch a graph. Just a reminder for those who may have forgotten, when you look at the gradient, you'll usually get a fraction, and that fraction is in the form rise over run. We can see we have a rise of 3 and a run of 4. Sometimes you'll be given equations in general form. An example of this might be something such as 2x minus 3y plus 1 equals 0. Both of these equations are the same. They've just replaced the a with a 2, the b with a minus 3, and the c with a 1. You might notice that there's a condition to the side that states that you cannot have a coefficient of 0 for y. They say that for very good reason. I'll bring up this function on Desmos to show you why. Here's the function 2x minus 3y plus 1 equals 0. We can see our graph here. We can see that our graph is a function because if we were to draw vertical lines, they would only pass through one point. What would happen if we change the coefficient of y to 0? Let's make it minus 0y. You'll notice that we now have a vertical line, and a vertical line is not a function. If I was to use the vertical line test and draw a vertical line over my vertical line, it would be passing over more than one point. In fact, it would be passing over all the points. So the reason we've got this condition here is because we are talking about linear functions. If the coefficient of y was 0, it wouldn't be a function. Anyway, it's time for us to move on to the next slide where we learn how to sketch linear functions. When you were first taught to sketch a linear function, you were probably taught to use a table of values. You might have been given the function y equals 2x minus 1, to which you wrote some x values and their associated y values. So you might have picked negative 2, negative 1, and so on for your x values. And then your y values would have been negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, and 5. Once you filled in your table of values, you would then label your points and connect them with a straight line. Your line might look something like I've drawn on the right. Now this is quite an arduous and time-consuming task. And when you think about it, why did we need to draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points? How many points do you need to draw a straight line? Well, you only need 2 points. You don't need any more than 2 to draw a straight line. So here we have two methods that we can use to sketch a graph. Both of them involve finding two points first and then drawing your straight line. So we'll start by talking about the gradient intercept method. And what we'll do first is we'll get rid of our table of values and also our line. Now I'm going to change this equation. I'm going to change it to 2 thirds x minus 1. You might notice that this equation is in gradient intercept form. And gradient intercept form looks like this y equals mx plus 
b. We can see that m is 2 over 3. Now m stands for our gradient. So our gradient, the symbol for which is m, is going to be 2 over 3. We can see that b equals negative 1. So our y-intercept, the symbol for which is b, is going to be negative 1. How does this information help me sketch my graph? Well, the first thing I'm going to look at is my y-intercept. My y-intercept is negative 1, which means that my graph crosses the y-axis at negative 1. I can label that point here. I have now found 1 out of the two points that I need. I only need to find one more point, and then I can draw my linear graph. The next thing I'm going to look at is my gradient. You might remember that the gradient is going to be a fraction where rise is over run. So we can see that our rise is 2 and our run is 3. That means I can look at the point I've labelled and I need to go up 2 squares. I'm going to do that with a dotted line. I'm going up 2 squares because my rise is 2. I'm also going to go across to the right 3 squares and I'll show that using a dotted line. The reason I'm doing that is because my run is 3. So I go up 2, across 3, because my rise is 2 and my run is 3. I now have my second point here. Now that I've labelled two points, I have enough information to draw my straight line. I've been able to use the gradient intercept method to quickly sketch my linear function. This worked really well because my equation was already in gradient intercept form, which meant that the gradient intercept method was really easy to use. What if I had an equation that wasn't in gradient intercept form? Let's say it was in general form. Let's clear the page and bring up a new function. Let's look at the function 2x plus 4y minus 8 equals 0. This equation is in general form, so we can't really use the gradient intercept method unless we rearrange the equation first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the x and y intercept method. When using the x and y intercept method, we look at what happens when x equals 0 and also when y equals 0. To help you understand what I mean, I've got a miniature version of a table of values. Our x values go in the top row and our y values go on the bottom row. Now, as I mentioned before, we're looking at what happens when x equals 0 and what happens when y equals 0. So we'll start by looking at what happens when x equals 0. So when x equals 0, we're going to have 2 times 0. We're substituting 0 in place of x. Then it's going to be plus 4y minus 8 equals 0. 2 times 0 is 0, which means this is basically going to cancel out, leaving us with 4y minus 8 equals 0. We can now add 8 to both sides, which will cancel our minus 8, giving us 4y equals 8. And then we can divide both sides by 4. This will cancel the 4s, giving us y equals 2. So what we find is when x equals 0, y equals 2. We can label that on our table of values. We also want to look at what happens when y equals 0. So when y equals 0, we're going to take our equation. We have 2x first, so 2x, and then we need to add 4y. Now if y is 0, this becomes 4 times 0. And then we subtract 8, and this will equal 0. Now whenever you times something by 0, 4 times 0, it cancels it out, it becomes 0. So we're left with 2x minus 8 equals 0. 
So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add 8 to both sides. This will cancel the minus 8 and will give us 2x equals 8. Next, I'm going to divide both sides by 2, like so. This will cancel the 2 and we will get x equals 4. So we find that when y is 0, x will equal 4. We now have two points that we can label on our Cartesian plane. When x is 0, y is 2. That's the point 0, 2. When x is 4, y is 0. That's the point 4, 0. Once we have drawn our two points, we can quite simply join them with a straight line, and we have our linear graph. Anyway, that concludes our video introducing linear functions. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.